Jasper bet hadn't been well. I know. I saw. I saw that. He's starting to heal soon. So. Who's Larry? Oh, babe. Yeah, babe. Yeah, babe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Babe. Yeah. Babe. Right. Right. So. Okay. So let us sit tall as we do when we begin each class. I keep forgetting my glasses. Yeah, you can sit them on that chair right next to you. That's good. If you didn't sit on them. Yeah, I'll watch you. <laughs> and it's nice if you can sit away from the back of your chair so that you're actually supporting your spine. Anti-gravity muscles working during the course of this class. You can let your eyes close. Become aware of the feeling sense of your breath. Flowing in your nostrils. The coolness inside the nostrils and the flow of the breath as it travels from that point up your nostrils into the space behind your eyes. Yeah, just come this way. Come towards me a little bit more. Okay, good. And let the spaciousness of the breath flow into your between yourselves. Feel the expansion in your ribcage and in your abdomen as the inhalation fills your lungs and the exhalation relaxes same tissues. The coolness of the breath <clears throat> enters the nostrils and merges into one stream and flows from the nostrils into the space behind the eyes. Bring your awareness. 
hands into the base of your thumbs and place them against the middle of your forehead where your nose bridge joins your eyebrow ridge. And then gently but firmly smooth across your forehead to either side of the base of your thumbs. And when you get to your temples, make a nice circle there. Come back again to the middle of your forehead with the base of the thumbs, a little higher up this time, and again smooth across the forehead to the temples, make a circle there. And now a third time, bring the base of the thumbs again to the middle of the forehead, this time where the hairline joins the dome of the forehead, and smooth across to either side, continuing to breathe smoothly, breathe completely, without stops or starts. After you make a circle at the temples, make a window with your thumbs and index fingers and bring those to the middle of your forehead where your eyebrow ridge joins your nose ridge and begin to knead the upper border of the eye socket, your eyebrow ridge, with your thumb and your index finger and work your way to either side over the tops of the eye socket there, pressing on the bony tissue and moving the flesh of the eyebrow like you're kneading, kneading bread and work your way over to the sides of the eye sockets and once you get there make a circle on the temples. Rest whenever you need to. Take a second pass, pressing on the upper edge of the eye socket. Pressing, releasing, you can feel all of the little nooks and crannies of the upper border there of your eye socket, the bony tissue of the skull. And work your way over to your temples. Make a circle there with your fingers. Take a third pass, starting again, the top of the nose bridge, remembering that underneath the skull here are many sinus cavities. And by massaging this tissue, you get into a lot of pressure points and you also stimulate the circulation in the mucosa and the areas of the sinus cavities. And once you get over to your temples, make a circle there and massage the masseter muscle, you know, that's connected to your jaw. The nice circles there. Finishing that, rest your arms for a second. Holding them up gets a little tiring. Make a couple of shoulder circles. And now bring the index fingers and lay them alongside your nose so that they're pressing on the lower border of the eye socket and without pressing on the eyes themselves, simply press on that lower rim of the eye socket. It's a lot sharper. You can feel it with your fingers there. Press, release, press, release, and work your way out under each eye over to the sides of your eye sockets and make a circle with your fingers on your temples again. Then take a second pass, laying index fingers alongside the nose, press on the lower border of the eye socket, press, release. You also have sinus cavities here as well, giving you nice circulation to the superficial tissues and also getting into the bone, the bony structure. Make a circle at the temples, get there, and we'll do it one more time. Start with the index fingers alongside nose so that you're pressing on the lower rim of the eye socket, pressing, releasing, the breath continuing to flow smoothly, the coolness of the inhalation. If you'd like, you can focus on breathing a little more deeply, a little more of an inhalation, a little more of an exhalation. When you finish that, now bring the base of your thumbs alongside your nose again and mash your nostrils towards one another with the base of your thumbs, and then massage the cheek 
muscles on either side of your nose, work your way underneath the cheekbones, out to the sides. When you get over towards your ears here, go ahead and open your jaw and push your fingers into the, uh, you can feel the joint there. Move your jaw a little side to side. Massage that area. And do that again. Start with the base of the thumbs right next to the nose and push the nostrils together briefly and then massage the cheek muscles underneath the cheekbones to either side, working your way up towards the, the uh, temporal mandibular joint, which is just right below your ears, a little on your sides of your face there. You kind of press into that dimples of your that are form when you open your, your jaw. Good. We're starting to stimulate the saliva in your mouth. You notice you open your mouth and you start to get a little saliva there. That's good. The enzymes in the saliva. Lower your arms. We do this because we want to, the joints and glands exercise to stimulate our digestion. This is a good thing to have our good digestion. So now let us bring the fingertips. Well, if you're wearing glasses, go ahead and put your glasses on. Now is a good time. Yeah, because so we're done with that part of the face. So once you have your glasses on, take the fingertips to the upper lip, just below the nostrils, and press on where the teeth uh, join the gum, so you're pressing through the flesh of your cheek and your upper lip, massaging your gum. The roots of the teeth work your way along the teeth towards the jaw joint, and you begin to feel the muscular tissue there, and you also are getting into the parotid gland, that is your saliva, the salivary gland, and so give a good massage there. Kind of move your head side to side a little bit. Right. And then let's take the tips of the thumbs to the tip of the chin underneath and the fingers to the lower teeth and press again on the lower gums where the lower teeth go in. Use your thumbs to massage the inside of your jaw ridge there. I see. There's a place right over here. Over here. Yeah. Good. So work your way towards the jaw joint. And, uh, yeah. All right, and then take your palms together and make some nice fire. See them. Ha, 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 ha. Work it hard, like you are going to make a fire. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Hotter, hotter, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Make some hot, move fast, move fast, faster. Take that heat. Okay, and then take it to the back of your neck the base of your skull, and massage your occiput, your, the space of your skull there, and those muscles, the neck muscles. Work your way down the neck, either side, shift your head a little bit, either side, okay, and then massage the area between your neck and your shoulder joint. Dig in with your fingertips and kind of make like, put the fingertips together to get onto that shoulder blade back there. Reach as far back as you can. This top here, collarbone area. Both sides. You can press strongly. Dig in on top of that shoulder blade back there. Those tight muscles. And now in front. Just inside of your shoulder joint, you feel that bump. It's about the size of a gumball. Take your fingers and kind of go around. That's part of your shoulder blade, right? So you can kind of move your shoulder blade forward so you can feel it. And work around that. That's where a lot of your rotator cuff muscles have an attachment site. Do both sides. And then work on the shoulder itself. That rather strong, fibrous muscle, right? It protects you when you bump into the walls. <laughs> so you can 
vigorously feel the ropey quality of it and kind of separate those fibers that you feel with your fingertips, work into the bony parts that you feel there too, cover all those surfaces, then begin to work down the upper arms and twist gently or strongly. You can try both approaches. Squeeze those muscles to the bone with your hand. Feel the bone, you know, between. There's an area here where you can really feel the edge of the bone. So go across that, and also on the back side. Both, yeah, both, uh, both arms. And finally, we get to the elbows. Again, feel the bony parts of the elbows. Use your fingers and your thumb to circle around those bones, dig in there, and then come down just a little onto the, just below the elbow joint here, and you'll find the ropey tendons again of your fingers, and play across those like they were a giant harp. You can really get in there. It's very good therapy for our arms and our hands and your joints. So, both sides, and you notice if you're using your fingers on the outside of your thumb, it's pressing into the underside, it's a lot spongier there. So there's a very different kind of quality of muscle there, muscle tissue, so just enjoy that. Then work down the forearms, and remember you have those two bones here, so if you squeeze, and then you gently twist your arm, like I said, it's nice, it brings a little torsion to that, kind of little separation to those bones. Squeeze, dig in between, the bones with your fingertips and your thumb. And uh, you remember, it's like your pet dog sometimes you know, takes your arm and their teeth and kind of squeezes it. So you can enjoy that sensation. Your body responds to it the way it does when the dog does it or somebody else does it. You know, like your body is sort of like thinking, yes, this thing's good. Who's doing this? Oh. Doing it myself. Wonderful. And then work into your wrist joints and all of the, remember there's eight bones right in here that feel like nodules of gravel or pebbles or something. So really try to feel those, run across those, move around. There's a lot of nerves and tendons going through this tight area here. So it's a place of great energy exchange. And then the hands like to be simply squeezed. Yeah, squeeze down the hand towards the fingertips. Like that. That's, you know, that's always a, a comforting gesture. If you take someone's hand and gently squeeze it, it always is very reassuring. So, again, this is releasing endorphins in your own mind. It's feeling good. And uh, then milk each finger. Down towards the tips, give it a little pull and a tug, and squeeze. Go down each, kind of like you're taking off your gloves. Okay, so once you've done both hands, now sweep your right hand and arm with your left using the broad surface. Start at the periphery and sweep in across the wrist, elbow, and shoulder joints. Take at least three or four paths, kind of like you're taking a bath, a prana bath, and do the other side. An energy bath, you're going against the grain, and you're assisting lymph massage, lymphatic material to move in towards your heart region, which is always really good. Plus, you're holding your arms up and high, high too, which is good. Okay. All right. Straighten out your sleeves. Let your arms hang for a moment. Sit up tall, let your eyes close. Simply just come in back to the breath awareness, the flow of the breath coming in the nostrils. The movement. And notice how your arms are feeling at this point. Just a pleasant, tingling sensation. And now, you can open your eyes. We'll continue, so just tap your sternum with your fingers tips rather vigorously, where your shirt pocket is here, remember your thymus gland sits underneath your sternum, it's very important in your endocrine.
operating function, so you're kind of waking it up. And then use your fist to pummel your upper chest here just below your collarbone on each side. Nice tap down, nice, nice tapping. And then the lower border of your ribs here, same thing. Tap, and if you're able to work on your left side here, yeah, do a C curve and kind of begin to work around towards the back, towards your kidney region and your spine. Back there, kind of go up and down the spine as much as you can reach. And in that area between your hip and your 12th rib, back there is kind of the uh, tender area that responds well. Okay, do the other side. Your right side, getting into the ribs and the lower border there, and then leaning forward, tapping into the kidney region, and down along the spine there, down towards your sacrum. Okay, good. Now with both hands, lean forward from the hips rather than the waist, so kind of a flat back there, and get into your sacrum area. You notice there's not very much flesh back there. It's kind of, you can really feel the flat surfaces of that massive bone. Good. And then work around onto your thighs. And this is you, the right leg from the knee back towards the hip, using your fists to pummel the thigh, sides, top, inside area, and switch to a karate top. And move as fast as you can. Just will yourself to move faster, as fast as you can, from the knee into the hip joint. Then use fingertips, so it's more of a kind of a, a, a sparkling. It's getting action. Yeah, it's getting warm. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing. Okay, and then take both hands and massage, just uh, squeeze the muscles of the thigh to the bone, kind of twist them around the uh, bone just a little bit. And now let's work on the knee. So really feel into the kneecap around the patella bone. You feel the indentations and the sides and top, particularly the top area. Then massage the sides of the knee joint. You can feel, if you pick up your leg, you can feel where that joint is. And it's, you can sort of more or less stick your fingertips into that small depression and go back and forth to give increased circulation to the joint capsule there. It's really important, right, for knee health. And then take your fingers and work on the back side from the calf stroke up into the recess behind the knee and then onto the thigh and do that at least three times just pressing pretty hard kind of lengthening you're going from the periphery towards the torso okay good then sit tall and twist slightly over your right thigh fold forward from your hips so not at your waist but from your hips come on down so you can reach down to your foot Press on the top of your foot through your shoe with your fingertips or your knuckles and then massage around the knee, around, I'm sorry, around the uh, ankle. ankle, that's what that's called. Yeah. I hope your knee is out, but not down there. Okay, and then work up the calf, uh, squeeze up the calf muscle there. Um, you can feel the sharp, razor sharp edge of the shin bone on each side, squeeze the muscles to the bone with both hands, and then we finish that leg by sweeping with the broad surfaces from, of the hand from the foot past the ankle, knee, and hip joint, make at least three or four passes, really like you're putting on a big pair of energy stockings, and again, you're going from the periphery towards your torso, so you're encouraging lymph to move in this direction. You're going against the grain. It's very good for the hair follicles, everything, just to simply get that kind of brush up. Okay, good. And then set that leg to the side. And sit tall again. This is the great part of this part of exercise where we simply sit with our eyes closed, come into the feeling sense of the breath, Breathe into all of the cells of the body and enjoy how sensationally different you feel.
particularly how your right leg feels compared to your left. And how you can feel your left leg, but there's that feeling of anticipation and that you're not quite done yet. So let us open our eyes and work on that left leg from the knee to the hip joint, using your fists to pummel the muscles from the knee to the hip, and then switch to a karate chop motion and move as quickly as you can on all of the surfaces that you can get to. Use your fingertips for a slightly different sensation. All of these sensations are good for your neural connections. They're telling your brain, they're kind of refreshing all of those connections. Like, yes, I do have a body. Yes, I can feel my leg. Yes, it feels good. And all of those types of things. And uh, Okay, now work on the knee. And again, you want to trace the kneecap and particularly push into the uh, valleys and sockets that you find there on the top of the knee there. That's a good place to press on. And then find the actual size of the knee joint. Again, you can pick that leg up just a bit just to feel where that joint is. Run your fingertips in that groove, in that joint capsule, and then a little bit back and forth, up and down, across that joint, just to wake that up and wake up the, uh, that covering of the bone, you know, it's called the periosteum, right? It doesn't have very much circulation there, so we want to encourage it, yeah, break it up, okay. Then work on the back side from the calf onto the hamstring through the actual back of the knee joint there, kind of like you're digging in, moving in that direction. Good, set that aside. Sit tall so that you can twist a little towards your left leg and fold forward over your hip joint. Your belly is laying now on your thigh so that you can drape down and reach down to your foot. Press on the foot or the ankle, wherever you get to, it's fine. And press through your shoe, through your sock, and work around your ankle, then the calf, squeeze, squeeze the muscles to the bone, give them a gentle twist, squeeze, and then finish it all by sweeping from the foot up past the ankle, knee, upper leg, and hip joint with the broad surfaces of your hands, just like you're bathing or putting on a big pair of stockings. And uh, when you've completed that to your satisfaction, just set that aside, sit tall. Let the inhalation help you lengthen and unfurl your spine. Relax your face, your eyes, your shoulders. And remain with the awareness of the breath. Let your arms dangle. Make some circles with your shoulders. Start small, gradually get a little bigger. And as you peel your shoulder blades onto your back, let your heart come forward. And then as you come forward, bow in so you're rounding your spine. And you take the shoulders up towards your ears, onto your back, and you arch your back. And you keep going. And now you can coordinate it with your breath. You're inhaling as you go up. Exhaling as you fold in. Inhaling as you open. Breathing through the nose is always good. I'm em emphasizing the breath by blowing on the microphone here, but you can blow through your nose, that's even better. Okay, reverse that direction just to get a sense of how to do it in the opposite direction. Good, okay, settle that down. Now, let us work on our face, okay, just to work on our digestion a little bit more. So, open your mouth, dilate your lips, stick out your tongue, try to touch the tip of your chin with your tongue. Open your eyes wide, look up to the tops of your sockets. Uh, ah, ugly, ugly, ugly. Ah. <laughs> Impact. Okay, good. So that's our, our lion pose. We're going to do that again. So the trick is that you start the dilation process, and it really is a di dilation process. You discover if you stay in it for a while, you can begin to open a little wider. Yeah. Don't exceed your capacity. Start to draw your ears back, draw all of the flesh back towards your tailbone like the dog or the cat in the morning. You can 
place your palms down, spread your fingers, grip the floor through your shoes with your claws and your feet. Just sit tall, draw your heart through. Try it again. And then relax completely. So it's a it's a case of kind of step by step, just going a little bit more deeply. Okay. So the third time we do it, let's incorporate the uh, exhalation. So this is when you you go into the pose, and after a nice deep inhalation, you fold forward from the hips, not the waist, but from the hips, come down, and you just let the air rush out, and it kind of sounds like the hiss of the cat. Right. So again, spread your claws, palms down, activate your feet. Long spine. Exhale deeply. Inhale. Go into the pose. And then come up slowly, just so you don't get dizzy. And then curl your spine. Good. And then move your lips over your teeth. And your jaw. Blink your eyes. Usually you notice that you have produced a little bit more saliva, which is very good for the enzymes. It's waking up your whole digestive tract to do this. And, but we're going to also wake it up because we do the counter pose. So make some gentle fists with your hands at first and then gradually stronger, stronger arms, elbows, keep holding, upper arms, shoulders, buttocks, knees, feet. Neck, torso, now the face. Switch the face towards the tip of the nose. Keep breathing, keep breathing, but really go for it until you're shaking. Hold, keep breathing, shake, hold, and good. Now that'll get you warm. <laughs> good. So it's the, once you contract a muscle like that and you hold it for a period of time, it has an automatic reflex to relax. And uh, so we're going to do that again. So this time when you make your fists, fold in from the little fingers, one at a time, curl in, wrap the thumb in, begin to tighten the fist. And again, this can have a kind of an emotional component as well. So you can have kind of a frustrating, angry feeling to it. You grip your feet, your buttocks, your lower legs, your torso, squint your face towards your nose. Hold, keep breathing, really hold as tight as you like. You can release anytime you want, or hold just a little longer. And good. Let the arms dangle. So that will get you warm. And that's uh, compressing your entire vascular system. So we've talked about ischemia before. And that is the restriction of your capillary beds. And of course, it's the most... most uh, most critical when it's happening in your brain. But it happens everywhere. Where every, every place you have your capillary beds. And especially areas where you have wearing elastic clothing. In all of your joints, there's a little bit of ischemia that just naturally happens. So that's why we do the joints and glands, because we want to open all of those. These are all chakras energy centers, places where there's an energy exchange. So, so we've gone top to toe with today's practice, and on Wednesday and Friday we'll do some of the other practices as well. So it's time to sit tall as we began the class for a moment of coming back into that integrated place where we bring our awareness to the breath, our eyes are closed. We feel a sense of the breath coming in both nostrils. And the coolness <clears throat> of that breath. We can feel it flowing from the nostrils as one stream into the center of the skull. vital life force that comes on the breath and leaves on the breath, expanding and permeating all of 
to the spaciousness that is your mind body. Be aware of being aware. In the silence and the stillness that place of awareness.